Sweetie Soup style. <laughs> now, it's been a while since I've seen you properly, properly, isn't it? Yes. And I sent you away as a boy, yes. and you've come back a bigger boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. I've You're come back a, a, large, a larger version of me. Yes. Slightly bigger. Yes. Slightly older, yes. yes. So, what have you been doing, Kai? Where have you been? So, when you left the, the dance floor, yes. how's your journey been? Well, it's been, yeah, it's been a roller coaster, really. It feels weird to step on a competition floor. I think the last time was about 10 years ago, so I do feel a little bit. I'm glad we sat down. I'm glad we're not dancing. There would be a lot of pressure with all these amazing judges in there. Um, but no, it's been a roller coaster for me. Obviously, I, I, I stopped competing 10 years ago um, with the help of yourself and, you know, Warren and Christy and Alex and Lisa from around, around the area. So, yeah, I remember. Fond, fond memories of competing, but you know, it's hard as a, as a dancer, it's not always the easiest thing. Sometimes, you know, competition's hard when you sometimes don't get the results, and sometimes life takes you in a bit of a different direction. For me, it was shows, so I did as many of the judges and professionals would have burned the floor, uh, which is like touring around the world, so that was a lot of fun for me. And then I did the Irish version of Strictly, which is called Dancing with the Stars, but Dancing with the Stars, there's nothing like to call it over there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really bad accent there, but anyway, I thought I'd try and get a laugh. Wherever you go, you <laughs> seem to, you're a bit of a comedian, you just pick up people's accents. I understand you do a pretty good Jody Ballas impression. Well, let me just start off by saying, James, um, the Britannia Open title is 2023. What? Okay. What a prestigious event. Thank you so much for having me. And remember, it's never too early for that team from Shirley. <laughs> That's quite good, actually. I might get a new voice from her after that. And then do an impression. <laughs> so what is it about uh, competitive dancing you might miss? Because I understand, of course, going on the stage, performing how you have been in the touring shows, now going on telly, which is completely different again, isn't it? But do you still miss that buzz of waiting for your number to be called? Come on to the dance Of course, of course. It was funny actually, I was just saying to Adelmo there that, you know, Strictly was in Blackpool when the Nationals were in Blackpool in November and I wasn't in, in the competition anymore because I didn't have the best celebrity partner in the world. So I said, oh, yeah, what's, yeah, what's the best one? Yeah, um, not so far. Yeah, not the best, not the best. But I, I went, I said to my, my girlfriend Nadia, I said, should we go over to the, to, to the Winter Gardens and see if there's the competitive practice and we'll bring our shoes and maybe have a swing and, and um, everyone's faces when we walk in are you making a comeback yes i'm just picking up my number the tail suits in press everyone was very but no we didn't make a comeback yeah, but if we did if we'd have a bit of a, a bit of a swing on the horse that was nice but i do i do miss the, com the competitiveness and you know dancing in, in, in the beautiful blackpool tower and the winter gardens yeah, yeah it is fine so having a camera Judging your face all the time when you're dancing is quite a bit different, isn't it? Yes. Perhaps even more, would you say that dancing in front of esteemed judges is more nerve wracking than dancing in front of 8 million people? Weirdly, yes. Yeah, yeah. When, when you've got someone looking at your feet and, and judging you, it's a lot more different now. I mean, I have to say it's a lot more easier when you're dancing for someone that's come to watch you, but again, like you said, like the, we all know in this room that this is what we live for and this is why we danced originally because we just love competing and we love dancing and that was the reason why we started that's the reason why i started so, yeah oh that's nice yeah it is man <laughs> and i still love it i still love it and that's why it's nice to come to you know an event like this and, and watch it it's still so beautiful and the quality like we've just seen with peter is here as well as everyone is still doing fantastically well so it's really nice to see so even if you get kicked off strictly would you think about coming back <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll give you some singing lessons and you give me some dance lessons. Well, we tried that once before, didn't we? Yeah. We're not the singing lessons. Should we do a duet now? No, let's not. <laughs> it looks like we are. We look well, like we're not wearing our white suits, though. No. Because we're on stools and then we get to the uh, key chain. We have to stand up yeah, we'll and approach them. Yeah, we'll approach them. Oh. Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> so, having had a camera thrust in your face now for two years, for yes. now, how has your life changed in that respect? Because I know Kai Bowles, we've got his dance shoes, came to a lesson with somehow a lady stiletto, 
and a man's height and boot rather than a pair of lads of human heads. And uh, not really being known who you are, walking around, just doing what you like, and being yep. who you are. Now all of a sudden, you kind of, people kind of know who you are. Well, kind of, yeah. I mean, we're, we're live streaming this, and I wouldn't be sat here if that wasn't the case. So, no, it's, it, it is a lot different, and, you know, it's not the easiest at times. I know it, it sounds really nice being, you know, famous and all this, but it's really not all that. It's actually quite annoying when, people, when, when cameras are just following you around. But it's really nice. The nice part of this is when you know you come to things like this, and you know those those wonderful kids that just start to you know want to have a photo with you. And I remember being like that when people from Strictly would come to you know our dance school or whatever. We would meet them, and, and you know you get very excited. And you know now the roles, so I know exactly how they feel. So it's nice to give back a little bit, and um, yeah, and see how happy it makes people. So it is nice. Didn't you have a funny experience recently when someone asked if they if you were you? Yes, yes. I was out for a drink with my friends and someone said to me, Are you, are you that guy from Strictly? I went, Yeah, I am. She went, No, you're not. <laughs> well, yes, I, no, I am. She went, No, you're not. I went, Well, why did you ask me then? <laughs> it makes no sense. But yeah, you, you get some funny ones. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. So, um, you've got a thought coming up, haven't you? I do. Is this where we plug in? We yeah, plug in. We've got to plug in. We've got to plug in. But we're not very happy about it, are we? <laughs> Why is that? Well, we're not very happy about the opening nights. Well, no, no, because well, I can't say no again. I've got well, no, to sell, sell, sell tickets for it. No, well, obviously I'm from Southampton, and I tried very hard to get into the Mayflower Theatre, but unfortunately it wasn't able to happen. So my opening night with Nadia is actually in Portsmouth, which has. <laughs> If you're not from Southampton, you'll now know why it's not a very famous, happy thing. But no, I'm doing a tour with my, my lovely other half, Nadia Bichkova, um, who is a 10 dance, two-time world champion. And uh, we're, we're doing it, it's called Once Upon a Time. And it's very, very, very lucky to be able to do this, you know, as a young kid that was doing the competition circuit, much like everybody here. And, uh, you know, I feel very, very privileged to be able to do a UK tour. And it's called Once Upon a Time. And if you would love to come watch, I would be very, very grateful. But if you don't, and it's absolutely fine. But uh, yeah, there's the plot for my tour with Nadia. And we, but our main thing is we want to bring back the traditional, proper ballroom and Latin dance, and that maybe sometimes goes over the over our heads nowadays. On strictly, maybe it gets a bit too fun. So we really want to make sure that it's um, ballroom and Latin that we. No and love. So, yeah. You've got some uh, actual ballroom and Latin dancing. We do. Yes. We've got a cast of uh, six other dancers, uh, two, two former British champions. We've got Chloe Hewitt, who's a British champion. We've got Oliver Beardmore, who was also a British champion. Recently, right? Very recent. Very recent. Yeah, a couple of years ago. Yeah, a couple of years ago. So, we've got a great cast and a singer, and uh, yeah, so it's very exciting. We're currently in rehearsals now, hence why I've got a bit of a limp because I'm very tired. You've always been very angry, lately. <laughs> Uh, why is it Nadia and Kai, and not Kai and Nadia? Well, you know, everyone's known as, I won't say names, but you know, you, you, it's always a man's name first, so I thought, you know, why not be a gentleman and put the lady's name first? Yeah. Oh, gentleman. Gentleman, isn't it? You have Now you're Kelly and James, you're not James and Kelly. No, no we are not. <laughs> it's alphabetical. That's okay, fine. <laughs> now we've got a couple of questions, here's okay, one. Okay, go on. Hand then. it to me. Why did you choose dancing and not follow your father in football? I have to just say, we're quite pleased that <coughs> Southampton won tonight. Yes, it is. Both did exactly the same thing, so the result both did that exactly the same time. Yeah, we did. Over Uncanny. Yeah. Um, the reason why I chose dancing over football, um, I, was, I had a, just to put it in perspective, I had a Premier League contract from Southampton that was on the table, and I had the current, she was a juvenile British champion, and going into junior who wanted to dance with me. So I had a bit of a dilemma because I was not very good at dancing at the time. It's all my brain now. Um, and I was pretty good at football. And uh, my dad was saying, well, what are you going to do? And he's from Newcastle, a bit of a Jordy, Billy Elliot dad. And uh, I said, well, dad, I think I want to be a dancer. And he was like, how are you? Okay, right? Why? I was like, well, I just love it. You know, he was like, Okay, my dad was like loads of girls there. Went, okay, fine, okay, fine. Good, yeah. So it ended up being good, and uh, my mum, who's obviously here as well, she's very supportive, and uh, turned out pretty good. So, 
Yeah. Not bad. Actually, the, the question did say in brackets, so girls. Well, there you go. There you go. It was all about the girls, wasn't it? It was all about the girls. So, in your dancing career over the years, by the way, not put their names on this, so we don't know who's written these Anonymous questions. questions. So, over the years, I assume you've had a few dance partners. Yeah. What yeah. makes a good and bad partner, and why do you split with the good ones? Well, I don't think, I'm going to ask that for them, whoever it was. Okay. He didn't split with the good ones, they split with him. <laughs> there because you go. he brought a stiletto and a man's hiking boot to lessons. <laughs> Uh, what makes a good dance partner? Um, for me, I think balance, I guess that's the, probably the key word, is balance in, in every kind of, in all parts of life it's important, especially when you're dancing, because you have to have the perfect relationship, you have to be a team, you have to work together. And yeah, it's about having fun, but at the same time, you know, I was only a kid, I was only a teenager, so, you know, I didn't really know what I was just doing, I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing back then, and now I'm have perspective and, and can look back and go, oh, I wish I did that differently, I wish I did that different. But what's important is that you get on with your partner and you both have a common goal and you both want to work hard and you have good coaches behind you and that's, that's the main thing. So I think that's a pretty good recipe. Pretty good. Pretty well said. Well said. Another little question here. We've got two more questions then. I'm gonna, we'll, have to, we'll have to get on. Uh, so Helen, I remember dancing with you a couple of years ago when you kindly covered a class. Any chance you'll be coming again to see us for a master class? Did he feel I don't know. Which Barbara, was it Barbara right there? Barbara, where are you Barbara? Oh, it was an easy Barbara. Yes, I'll be back soon, don't worry. I'll be back as soon as the tour's done. I've got a couple of months. I'm coming back. I'm here, aren't I? Well, yeah, that took me four months to fly. <laughs> and finally, the last question. Yes. When are you getting married? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very ready now. Uh, I don't know is the answer. No, no. My mum sat there going like that. <laughs> you don't live together yet, do you? One day, one day, for sure. You don't live together, do you? Not no, just yet. No, no, just yet. Yeah. Yeah. Step by step. Step by step. <laughs> well, very well said, the dancers. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kai. Thank, thank you, you for Kai. having me. Thank you for listening and not listening. Thank you. I've got some of the interest, real insights into Kai Lumpkin. Strictly sweet sound. <laughs> Touring the UK, and I'm sure it could be fantastic. We are going actually on opening nights. There's 50 of us coming to see on opening night. You better be good. I hope so. And is there an opportunity in the show at some point to speak? Yes, I will be chatting with you guys. I might even get you on to the night. Let's see. I, I have to be there to find out. <laughs> I, I'm reassuringly expensive to dance. I know. So, you know, only dance and money. <laughs> Thank you, Kai. Cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, everyone.